Chapter 30 Plant Form and Physiology 30.1 The Plant Body By the end of this section, you will be able to do the following. Describe the shoot organ system and the root organ system. Distinguish between meristematic tissue and permanent tissue. Identify and describe the three regions where plant growth occurs. Summarize the roles of dermal tissue, vascular tissue, and ground tissue. Compare simple plant tissue with complex plant tissue like animals. Plants contain cells with organelles in which specific metabolic activities take place. Unlike figure 30.1 a locust leaf consists of leaflets arrayed along a central midrib. Each leaflet is a complex photosynthetic machine, exquisitely adapted to capture sunlight and carbon dioxide. An intricate vascular system supplies the leaf with water and minerals, and exports the products of photosynthesis. Credit. Modification of work by Todd Petit. Introduction plants are as essential to human existence as land, water, and air. Without plants, our day-to-day -day lives would be impossible because without oxygen from photosynthesis, aerobic life cannot be sustained. From providing food and shelter to serving as a source of medicines, oils, perfumes, and industrial products, plants provide humans with numerous valuable resources. When you think of plants, most of the organisms that come to mind are vascular plants. These plants have tissues that conduct food and water, and most of them have seeds. Seed plants are divided into gymnosperms and angiosperms. Gymnosperms include the needle-leaved conifers, spruce, fir, and pine, as well as less familiar plants, such as ginkgos and cycads. Their seeds are not enclosed by a fleshy fruit. Angiosperms, also called flowering plants, constitute the majority of seed plants. They include broadleaved trees, such as maple, oak, and elm, vegetables, such as potatoes, lettuce, and carrots, grasses, and plants known for the beauty of their flowers, roses, irises, and daffodils, for example. While individual plant species are unique, all share a common structure, a plant body consisting of stems, roots, and leaves. They all transport water, minerals, and sugars produced through photosynthesis through the plant body in a similar manner. All plant species also respond to environmental factors, such as light, gravity, competition, temperature, and predation. Chapter Outline 30.1 The Plant Body 30.2 Stems 30.3 Roots 30.4 Leaves 30.5 Transport of water and solutes in plants 30.6 Plant Sensory Systems and Responses Animals, however, Plants use energy from sunlight to form sugars during photosynthesis. In addition, plant cells have cell walls, plastids, and a large central vacuole. Structures that are not found in animal cells. Each of these cellular structures plays a specific role in plant structure and function. Link to learning watch botany without borders. HTTP colon slash slash openstacks.org slash l slash botany underscore wo underscore board closing parenthesis. A video produced by the Botanical Society of America about the importance of plants. Plant organ systems in plants, just as in animals, similar cells working together form a tissue. When different types of tissues work together to perform a unique function, they form an organ. Organs working together form organ systems. Vascular plants have two distinct organ systems, a shoot system and a root system. The shoot system consists of two portions. The vegetative, non-reproductive, parts of the plant, such as the leaves and the stems, and the reproductive parts of the plant, which include flowers and fruits. The shoot system generally grows above ground, where it absorbs the light needed for photosynthesis. The root system, which supports the plants and absorbs water and minerals, is usually underground. Figure 30.2 shows the organ systems of a typical plant. Figure 30.2 The shoot system of a plant consists of leaves, stems, flowers, and fruits. The root system anchors the plant while absorbing water and minerals from the soil. Plant tissues Plants are multicellular eukaryotes with tissue systems made of various cell types that carry out specific functions. Plant tissue systems fall into one of two general types, meristematic tissue, and permanent, or non-meristematic, tissue. Cells of the meristematic tissue are found in meristems, which are plant regions of continuous cell division and growth. Meristematic tissue cells are either indifferentiated or incompletely differentiated, and they continue to divide and contribute to the growth of the plant. In contrast, permanent tissue consists of plant cells that are no longer actively dividing. Meristematic tissues consist of three types, based on their location in the plant. 
Apical meristems contain meristematic tissue located at the tips of stems and roots, which enable a plant to extend in length. Lateral 830 Chapter 30, Plant Form and Physiology Access for free at OpenStax.org. Meristems facilitate growth in thickness or girth in a maturing plant. Intercalary meristems occur only in monocots, at the bases of leaf blades and at nodes, the areas where leaves attach to a stem. This tissue enables the monocot leaf blade to increase in length from the leaf base. For example, it allows lawn grass leaves to elongate even after repeated mowing. Meristems produce cells that quickly differentiate, or specialize, and become permanent tissue. Such cells take on specific roles and lose their ability to divide further. They differentiate into three main types, dermal, vascular, and ground tissue. Dermal tissue covers and protects the plant, and vascular tissue transports water, minerals, and sugars to different parts of the plant. Ground tissue serves as a site for photosynthesis, provides a supporting matrix for the vascular tissue, and helps to store water and sugars. Secondary tissues are either simple, composed of similar cell types, or complex, composed of different cell types. Dermal tissue, for example, is a simple tissue that covers the outer surface of the plant and controls gas exchange. Vascular tissue is an example of a complex tissue, and is made of two specialized conducting tissues, xylem and phloem. Xylem tissue transports water and nutrients from the roots to different parts of the plant, and includes three different cell types, vessel elements and tracheids, both of which conduct water, and xylem parenchyma. Phloem tissue, which transports organic compounds from the site of photosynthesis to other parts of the plant, consists of four different cell types. Sieve cells, which conduct photosynthates, companion cells, phloem parenchyma, and phloem fibers. Unlike xylem conducting cells, phloem conducting cells are alive at maturity. The xylem and phloem always lie adjacent to each other, figure 30.3. In stems, the xylem and the phloem form a structure called a vascular bundle. In roots, this is termed the vascular steel or vascular cylinder. Figure 30.3 This light micrograph shows a cross-section of a squash, Curcurbita maxima, stem. Each teardrop-shaped vascular bundle consists of large xylem vessels toward the inside and smaller phloem cells toward the outside. Xylem cells, which transport water and nutrients from the roots to the rest of the plant, are dead at functional maturity. Phloem cells, which transport sugars and other organic compounds from photosynthetic tissue to the rest of the plant, are living. The vascular bundles are encased in ground tissue and surrounded by dermal tissue. Credit. Modification of work by, Biophotos, Flickr. Scale bar data from Matt Russell.